Hi everybody, Tommy here from Queers and Soaps. I just wanted to introduce you to some friends of mine who are about to embark on some fun soap opera discussion. So tune in and enjoy, and I will see you soon. Hello, and welcome to Queers and Soaps. I'm Eric, and this is my co-host. I'm Karen. <laughs> <laughs> We're discussing Swan's Crossing, episodes 26 to 30, and we sure are exhausted. <laughs> we'll get into me over all the credits, and we'll get into it. This show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's valid. <laughs> what the... Uh, all right. <laughs> Episode 26. Uh, we pick up with the birth certificate fiasco that um, Garrett started. He switched the names on the birth certificate. He wants Sydney to believe that she's Sandy and that they were switched at birth and that they're each other in a way. It's complicated. <laughs> I don't know exactly what he wants from this. I, I like if he like I don't know. We'll discuss. So anyway, we pick up with that mess. She's like, I don't believe you. He's like, it's true. The paper's right here. Blah blah blah. Um Bobby Bobby and Jimmy, did they just I have discussed Edward? Who's Edward? Is Edward somebody? Or did I miss you? Edward is the guy that was at Swans with Sophia the one time when she commented that he, he was very tall. So that was the guy I think she was dating after she kind of oh, spurned yeah, Jimmy. I, and then she came back that. around for Jimmy. And I don't... <laughs> anytime someone says she's too old for you, bro, I'm like she is too old for you, bro. Stop talking to her. <laughs> Sophie is a monster. Yeah, Sophia's, Sophia's a nightmare. <laughs> She's so mean. I have, yeah, I said, Sophia comes over with an attitude. Like, she doesn't even come over, like, say hi to your, like, what the fuck? Like, she's just, and she's not on enough for us to, like, talk about her, really, because I kind of forget about her, and then they're like, Oh, she's here being a bitch. <laughs> like, I, I feel like all this week we learn a little bit more about her <clears throat> through her brother, and none of it is good. All of it is bad. Oh, yeah. So Nancy arrives. She's another monster. Uh, <laughs> she comes to the party. She says, dreary party. I'm like, dude, you've been there for a second. First of all, like, what the fuck? Nancy never enjoys anything. She is terrible. It's it's a, it's like a sin, really. Um, Mila says that Owen left to write a new song. I put, yikes. <laughs> we don't want that happening. But worse is the name of it. Is like vision and polka dot pink. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. And when she, anytime she's poor Mila, she's adorable. But anytime she spouts she a lyric, they are terrible. They are so so bad. They're they're not as good as JT's lines about the dead lizard. But it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I should make his songs. <laughs> make his poem songs. <clears throat> um. So I go on. Sydney doesn't believe. Garrett and she just, he just keeps going at her, going at her. Um, they were they happen to be on the, the born on the same day in the same hospital, so it's a possibility. Um, you know he's saying, and he calls her Sandy. <laughs> yeah, he's doing nothing but needling her through this entire episode, and I get the, the joy he gets out of it. Is I don't know, I kind of liked him this week. He is a bastard all week. But, like, I kind of really enjoyed how he was, like, getting off on this, like, revenge plot all by himself. Because nobody knows what he's doing except Sydney. <laughs> no. So he's literally made this custom plan just to irritate and make, throw Sydney off her game for, like, the entire week. And he's literally secretly enjoying every moment of it. And he has told no one. He's told no one he's doing this. He's still going on with his I love himself or I love myself type shit. And that's oh, really. I I'm love like, myself. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Terrible. Boy. I hate it. This boy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess you should love yourself, <laughs> but not being an asshole. I don't know. He's such a. I mean, person. she deserves it for like a day, but he's really like picking at her and it's getting to her head. So it's kind of fucked up. 
Um, I don't know exactly where it's going. We had a lot of adults this week, which was nice to see. <laughs> um, yes. So Neil gets overheaded. Um, he has a phone call from his mom. JT and Glory talk about him. They're like, we haven't seen him for a while. He's like, MIA. So this is where I was just like, okay, I guess the spies got there and maybe kidnapped them. That's what I was thinking. I don't know what you were thinking. Um, yeah, because of some things that we'll get to when we get to further on in the episodes, I have a feeling mm -hmm. that um, that was not Mrs. Atwater that called. I think he was drugged. I'm pretty sure he was drugged because of what happens in later episodes. Um, but like he just disappears and then we don't know where he is basically for the rest of the episode. So yeah. it's weird. Um, we have Sophia and Bobby are speaking Japanese. I guess they're trying to talk shit about Callie while well, she's trying to talk shit about Callie. Yeah, <laughs> and, that, uh, that just came out of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> why do they speak Japanese? Um, like, I guess she wanted to talk shit about Callie and didn't think Callie knew Japanese. Yeah, but all the, all the languages, these Italian sounding named children speak Japanese. <laughs> I mean, that's so Callie's fun. like Callie's like, I know what you said. Yeah, she traveled around the world in a submarine. She's probably yeah, speaks multiple languages. She tell she says that she traveled or she lived in Shanghai and Tokyo from eighty four to eighty eight. <laughs> I'm like, who talks like that? <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Whatever. Um my next note is Nancy is a dick to Sandy and Mila. <laughs> okay, so Nancy makes a weird comment about how the new song title could be a country song. Like, it was just a really <laughs> weird comment. And as usual, Mila is like an innocent lamb to the slaughter because she just looks at her and she goes, no, Owen doesn't write country music. And like, the <laughs> nothing lands because Mila just doesn't get it. But I was like, I wrote in my notes, I was like, is Nan just a bitch? Is like, I don't understand her. Why is Nancy and, always so mean? And people just take it because I would walk the fuck away. I'd be like, bitch, go away. Like, I'm yeah. out. Why talk to her? I don't, she seems to easily lift out of any of the scenes. Like, I mean, she has a crush on Jimmy, but like the only thing she does is come into a scene, be mean to someone, cause a little chaos, <laughs> and then go away. <laughs> <laughs> so then we have Sophia is pushing Bobby to like go with Callie. I guess he's you know she's trying to get him get her away from Jimmy. So she's like, go dance with her, go dance with her. Yeah, because Callie uh -huh. and Jim up Jimmy up to this point have been dancing and getting closer. Right. And then Sophia did not like that. And no. she came in and basically thrust herself into the middle of their what is essentially a date they are on. Yeah. Um, uh, how about this? The JT and Glory almost kissed 25 times. I love it. Every <laughs> time. I'm like, they're not going to kiss on this show. It's too teeny bopper. But I do love that they try to kiss a lot. I bet you they will on episode 65. Last one, baby. <laughs> Last yep, one. I, love, I kind of love JT and Glory, even though sometimes I wish Glory had a little more self-respect. Well, and I feel like, I don't know. I feel like their scenes are repetitive sometimes, too. Like, um, okay. well, because they haven't addressed any of the problems that they have in their relationship, which is that JT, um, science. Okay. So like in JT's head, <laughs> yeah. it's Neil and science, baseball, baseball. Katie, <laughs> and then glory. And mm -hmm. it's like, he doesn't realize he's doing it. Well, he is in high school and yeah, that he's is a like child. how I, it goes. Yeah, right. I get it. But at the same time, I wish <laughs> he would turn around and be like, I'm priority number 87 on your list of things. <laughs> and like, I have more self-respect than that. So get your shit together. I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> yeah, I know. I do like Lori so, though. It's horrible. Um, JT ends up getting paged after, um, no, they were interrupted by the pager or something. And what are you talking about? Oh, Mila was paged. That was when no, Owen called. Where, do you, where no. are you at? Hold on. Sorry, I'm at my notes. JT and Glory go in to kiss. They're interrupted again okay. while searching for Neil. JT gets paged, and, and then that's that. And then we well, were back to Neil, Sandy. Neil got paged, and Neil didn't answer. And it kept then calling they paged Neil, JT. and then they paged JT. Yeah, Yeah, because I guess his mom was trying to get a hold of him. I have a ton of notes on this episode. That's why I'm like... Uh, I know. I have, I'm have. i almost done mine, I think. Okay. Um, I know. I feel like the first episode of the week is always 
like hot. <laughs> it's always well, a lot going on. Yeah, because it's a recap and then it's the introduction of whatever's going to be the Friday problem. So we have Sandy's upset about Owen and Mila um, because Mila's going on and on about how Owen's writing the song. And, mm -hmm. um, and then I have um, Neil's mom is cutting off their funding. Yes. So what is she? I don't think we know, do we? I is think it's because of, of because of the parents. It's not has nothing to do with the school because they they think the funding comes from Neil's parents. And remember, Mr. Atwater runs a makeup company, so he probably has enough money to help them buy the supplies for the UB two B project. She's we haven't just, met them officially, though, right? The parents. No, we have not met their. We parents. We possibly yeah. saw his dad at the maybe one maybe yeah. we have no way of knowing. <clears throat> um, but no, so she's just like if Neil doesn't get his ass home, I, I will cut your funding. And I, I think she's smart to go to JT next because the two of them are always together. Right. So Sydney wants the birth certificate and Garrett won't give it up. He says she can't prove it isn't true. The papers were destroyed from the other, whatever, the, what is it? Mm -hmm. The mayor's place or whatever? Yeah, the medical records that we talked about earlier. Yeah. So he's like, literally, these are the only copies of it. I'm the only one that has it. And she's like, give them to me. And he's like, no. And she's like, well, what are you going to do with them? And he's like, I'm going to tell somebody. And she's like, <laughs> yeah. can, can you wait? And he's like, what, till you're 21? No, I'll give you a couple days. <laughs> and she just and loses her shit and shoves him in the pool. And I laughed really hard for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's the end of the episode. All right. I, let I me. A couple things before that. Okay. So I have right after that, we have Nancy and Sandy again. Okay. 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 I have the line. I have the line. <laughs> you can't be depressed and wear a dress that doesn't fit, right? <laughs> it's too unattractive. <laughs> I was dying when that line and came then I out. Put, and then I put, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a couple other things like, um, oh, I have, wait, hold I have Bobby says Sophia has also been a bitch to Callie. Um, yeah. Just the way it's just the way she is. <laughs> That's basically what he said. Well, two two things. First off, um, I wrote down when um, some, who, somebody asks Callie for her thoughts, and Callie says, "My thoughts aren't for sale." And the next line is, <laughs> I think I missed that. Part. I think it's Garrett. It was Garrett. And he said, my, she goes, my thoughts aren't for sale. And Garrett looked at her and he goes, maybe I could rent them. <laughs> like he's still trying to get the information out of her. Reason. It was, I was, so, so I was probably writing stuff. That's what happens. Like I'll write stuff and I'm still keeping it on. I'm not pausing or anything. So I probably missed it as I was well, writing. There, I mean, it was really cute in spots. I actually really like the shit eating green that Garrett's been wearing for like, since this started going down i kind of love it um <laughs> sydney sydney's hair is incredible in this i think she looks amazing yeah um, it really is all week and i do think that there was a really the reason that jt and glory were going to kiss is because glory thought that he had forgotten about the handkerchief that he he had given her because she's a young girl and she does right. like all that chivalrous stuff is like kind of and he had it in his pocket and he goes, well, I didn't want to sweat on this one. I was, I could take meals and sweat all over that one. So like he did yeah. kind of put her a little higher in this episode than yeah. he normally does. And I just, oh, Sophia, oh, Sophia. <laughs> she was so gross. Like she, she already looks like an adult next to these people. Right. And then for her to come in and just be like that girl that's like, I don't want it till I can't have it. And then I want it again. I'm like, Jimmy's a person. He's like a person, <laughs> not like a toy. And she, she does treat him He's like her a toy. toy. Yeah. And then my last note on that, um, before the pool pushing, was my favorite, <laughs> JT, part, favorite part. JT and Glory were being cute when he's Yay. talking, what is that? Uh, talking, I put talking science and she's talking herbs. I liked that. <laughs> they were trying to and make then a connection. They go to kiss and they're interrupted once again. And then Sydney pushes Garrett in the pool. The end. <laughs> Episode 27. Um, way to go, Sydney. <laughs> Everybody's like getting on her a little bit. Some of them are cheering her on. Some of them are upset about it. Um, Garrett comes out of the water and he's like, I am back. 
Yeah, I love that. I wrote that down. I think Garrett is so fun. <laughs> wouldn't it? Wouldn't it have been even better though if she puts them right back in? <laughs> I am that fam. <laughs> back for how long? <laughs> yeah, little bitch. <laughs> um, Glory has to get Garrett home because he has a curfew since he's not supposed to be there anyway. But like he, his dad let him for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Neil is still MIA. They almost kiss again. <laughs> yes. JT and Glory once again. Mm -hmm. This is all night. Um, Garrett stops them this time. He's like, we gotta go. Oh, um, Bobby... They, they find okay. the beeper, too. They find um, Neil's beeper on the ground. Uh, is that that part? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Bobby's very depressed in this episode. <laughs> I was like, Bobby's being really weird. And then he says something about all the people that are at the party are not with the people they're supposed to be with at the party. Right. And I'm like, Bobby, he, what do you mean? And he says he feels alone, but not in this. I feel I got the like, not in the sense that he's alone, but like a sense that he feels alone in the world because he's fucking weird. I think, he has, I think he seriously has identity issues. And I think it's going to come around to the fact that Sophia gets whatever she wants when she wants. And anytime Bobby has something to himself, Sophia takes it. So I feel like he, he has this idea where he comes up with being different people and stuff as a way to kind of deal with the fact that he doesn't have his own real identity. Because he it's is so slipping. Sad. It is. He is slipping between his Sage personality and who I guess is real Bobby. And he had like other personalities in the past. It's crazy. Like, I feel like crazy. this child is extremely neglected, and now yeah. I, I feel bad for him and less annoyed by him. Which would also make sense for Sophia being a bitch because she probably raised herself, so she holds it like she don't like anybody. You know, she's just a bitch. Well, JT <laughs> kind of is it. a good friend in that situation because like he sees that Bobby's down, and he's just like, "Why don't you come back to my house? Um, Neil's probably yeah. there, and we'll go play poker." And Both at the focused. same time, yeah. I thought, how late did this party go on? Why, like, <laughs> if this is a dance, it's not over at eleven, and people are going to hang out afterwards. Do they right. not sleep on this show? <laughs> What's happening? No, they don't. What time is it? I feel like I said that eight <laughs> times in my notes during this episode because so much happened after the dance, and I'm like, what time? What time are we in? Did the dance go from seven well, to eight fifteen? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember how long they used to be. I, I thought they were only till like nine before. So yeah, who knows? Yeah, but even so, they are doing stuff for like two or three hours after that. They are clearly doing stuff until after midnight, unless this so dance we, was five in the afternoon. So we have Katie is sleeping in JT's hammock bed. That was <laughs> so home. cute. I love Katie so much. I'm guessing she doesn't have her own room on the set, so they have to use his room all the time. No. Um, she mentions someone called for Professor Van. Mm-hmm. And so that shit's coming. It's coming. Uh, eventually. Maybe episode 65, but it's coming. Yeah, and she's really cute about it because he keeps questioning her. And she's like, piggyback ride to my room. Right. Um, and he's like, N tell me about the phone call. <laughs> 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 she does not care. She is so funny. Nancy and Sandy dance and talk about her and Jimmy liking each other years ago. Sydney's mom comes while she is thinking she isn't her daughter. So she's like, just like really getting upset about it and really thinking about it, overthinking and all that shit. Yeah. And I was but like, really Mayor, I was like, mayor accidentally confirms idea that they might not be related. Cause she's like, you're so not like how I was. And Sydney's um, face all week long. drops all week long. All week and every, long. every time I'm like, please stop twisting the knife. This girl's going to jump out a window. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, so I guess, like you said, it's all week long, but to, to them, it's like night into the next day. <laughs> right. It is also a side note. This thing where they call grown-ups gronies is really irritating. <laughs> I don't think I even knew what it was. Um, well, Katie <laughs> says it. Katie, Katie said that it wasn't Neil. It was a grony. And <laughs> later on, I believe JT says, if we don't find Neil soon, we'll have to tell the gronies. And I was like, <laughs> this is a thing they're trying out. And I wish they would stop. Well, nobody likes it because it's never used again anywhere Ever. <laughs> That's well, yeah. what I know. Uh, yeah. Um, so now we get to Nancy with this weird shit, with this weird fantasy. <laughs> what is this Brad wife, like handmaid's tale weirdo fantasy that Nancy has? 
so weird. And that so she controlling. Was, she was making him a cheeseburger and oh, she put God. like the relish and the ketchup like right in the middle. So perfectly. <laughs> and the pickle, right? In the middle. I'm like, what is happening with this fucking fantasy? Is so I know, bizarre. And then he eats the burger and he's like, none of the condiments spilled out. And I'm like, there's not enough condiments on that burger. Put some more relish. Put some more ketchup. <laughs> let's go. Like that burger didn't even look real. It looked like Play-Doh. I hope it right. wasn't Play-Doh. And- <laughs> and this is while she's talking to Sandy. She, I guess, you know, zones off. Um, and then he comes on in and she offers to buy him a burger, but he's looking for Callie and he kind of blows her off. Um, Beric and Callie are talking again. He's so okay. creepy. Uh, and she, he's acting like she knows something. Like, it's not before. I think- I think the way he behaves towards her is like they're sharing some kind of secret, which I guess is what triggers me to be freaked out anytime they're on screen together because it really feels like some creepo hitting on a child. She oh. seems freaked out too. Yes, no well, she seems. thinks he's suspicious now because of that time he locked the the lock, right? Yeah, the padlock, and and I, also, she commented on him having ice cream at one point, and it's like, is he getting his messages? From from an ice cream parlor because he's constantly taking ice cream back to the shop. And I, I don't know what I'm trying to like figure out what leads up to what, but this show sometimes makes sense and other times makes zero sense. Zero. Yeah. But I agree. JT, I, I would be freaked out by Callie. Yeah. <laughs> JT climbs up to Glory's window, says, You look great before you go to bed. <laughs> so cute. It's just yeah. really cute because he's just kind of saying like you're not dressed up, you're not anything, you're just you, and you look adorable. Like he just noticed her, and like it's charming, and it's also very Romeo and Juliet with him climbing up the ladder. We have Sydney's mom talking to, <laughs> I put um about the poor Swan family and how she's happy that she's not one of them. I'm like, that's pretty sad. Meanwhile, did you hear that that these poor swans actually own an estate? So they are so super poor that they own land. <laughs> right. It's so bizarre. I guess they have a million dollars less than they do. I don't know. I don't know. And that's my that's my last note. So anything else you got for that one? Um I hardly took notes on that one. So I I there's like a couple things that I was just like I don't think I like the idea of Sandy and Nancy having an alliance because whatever, whenever Nancy's in the scene, she brings out the worst in people. And I think with Sandy, Sandy's problem is that she has wrapped her whole identity in being a singer and anything that threatens that like sends her into a tailspin. So I, I thought that was crazy. And I also felt like Barrick, like you said, he knew information. I thought that he was flattering her in a way to try and get her to say something because he, he kind of looked like he was fishing for information and she didn't bite. And then he got mad and kind of ended the interaction. Well, I don't know um, what information she would have. Well, unless like it's stuff that like when she got in that time, maybe, I don't know. So the Does one he know thing... she was in there? Does he know that they broke in? I can't remember. I, I don't remember. I do. Yeah, I, I remember. did write. I love when, um, when they have amazing quotes and there are a couple amazing quotes. The one I like the most is um, I think it was Nancy after Jimmy rebuffed them like horribly, they tried really hard and like they tried to get him to pick music. They tried to order him food. Like they did the whole nine trying to push it. And right. Nancy was right. Cause Nancy said, it doesn't pay to throw yourself at a guy. You just end up all broken. And then she sadly walks off. And I was like, that is some true advice, my girl. <laughs> and yep. um, they are still hunting for Neil. I thought that the two of them are very flirty. And I was confused when Callie was hiding. Remember Callie saw Jimmy and then hid? And then she, yeah. she saw Barrick and she was still hidden. And I was trying to figure out if she was stalking Jimmy or if she was going to follow Barrick. And I was like, follow Barrick and find out what the hell is happening. Right. Also, Sydney was at the wall. But just at the wall, like nothing really happened at the wall. Like, because it, <laughs> it still has the rock in the way. So oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's how it ended. That's how it ended. But I didn't even like, I was just like, yeah. oh, and we I know just, she's depressed. We get it. I did. <laughs> I really, really liked, um, I don't know, 
Glory was happy. I like that Glory was happy. Garrett was really, really smug at the end of that episode. And I, I kind of enjoy yeah. that. I know he's being a douche this week, but... Kind of one of those little montages. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It was a montage. It was definitely a montage at the end there. So episode 28, we have JT, like, having, like, some kind of nightmares. Bobby's still over. Mm-hmm. And then it's fucked up. <laughs> That's exactly what I put. Um... I don't think we really get anything accomplished in that scene, but no. Well, I think all we're trying to establish is the fact that JT assumed it was Neil that woke him up with music, and Neil is still missing. And poor Bobby is just left on the floor. This kid doesn't even have a bed; he sleeps in a hammock, and Bobby's laying on the floor. No respect. (laughs) Countess and Tutu come in, which I'm always excited to see them. (laughs) So, what will Countess do today? Mila is listening to that stupid honey song. Uh, I didn't even make note of it. <laughs> can't stand it. She's basically singing to a brush to herself. And like, yeah, because now you know, she wants to be a singer. Um, they have a little conversation and Countess hugs her. It's all about like the Countess being worried that um, her daughter is growing up and becoming a different person. And she she's like sad because like her little girl's like adulting or coming yeah. up with her own hobbies. And really she's just like, Don't you miss attention? Don't you want a ton of attention? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> we have Sydney fantasizing in this episode about being Sandy. <laughs> um being the fantasy and then Gar- yeah, like Sandy's her and Garrett is a wizard of some sort. Uh-huh, like, and he magically swaps their place. So Sydney goes from wearing normal Sydney clothes to wearing normal teenager clothes. And this is so, horrifying yeah. for her. I, I paused it and I went and had a few shots and then came back. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I, I don't I didn't, blame you. I don't blame you. But I should have. I you, should have. you should have. You should have. And then she about- gets. The funny thing about the Countess scene before we go on to the next scene is there's a next scene with the Countess again. We're going to talk about. All right. Well, thank you. um, But her mom wakes up. And then so next we go back to the Countess and Mila. Um, They talk about the dance and Countess is feeling like she's not needed anymore. She's like, my Mila doesn't need me. I guess the Countess always, you know, got her jobs and all that stuff. And Mila's coming into her own. She wants to sing. Um, and she just basically is like, you can tell me anything, Countess, to Mila. But what you're missing is the food thing. She, ah. they have all these, all this food on plates and it looks like little cakes or little crepes or something. And Mila says, I'm not hungry. And she's like, okay. And then she puts food on Mila's plate and Mila's like, I'm not hungry. And then she starts cutting the food for Mila. So it, even though she's having this moment where she's like, my little girl's growing up, blah, blah, blah. She still is not listening to anything Mila says to her ever. <laughs> and I feel She's like that's to... yeah, that's been the problem from the beginning is that the Countess is constantly trying to control every little move because she thinks she knows better than what Mila wants to do. That's why Mila right. has such a problem figuring out what's hers and what's not is because she has nothing that's hers. Yeah, She, she lives in a pink room. She doesn't even like pink. And the Countess came in in the exact same pink as the room was in. Like, it's so clearly that this room is... is The Countess's. The Countess's <laughs> bedroom, yeah. Yeah. Um, Mila talks to Owen about the polka dot pink song. Yeah. <laughs> I put JT and Bobby talk about nonsense. <laughs> I wrote down that Bobby is abused. <laughs> because of his it, sister. He is, yeah. Because he says, Um, JT tells this cute little story about them owning soapbox cars. hmm. And Bobby goes, yes, I remember that. Sophia took mine and she turned it into a flower box. And I was like, (laughs) what? Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, this boy needs help. Send help. I guess um, the parents ignore him and his sister's a bitch to him. (laughs) Right. And then we just watch, um, we basically watch Sydney every time she talks to her mother, her mother says another thing like, you're not like me at all. You're nothing like me. I always wanted to be a singer. (laughs) I'm like, oh God, no. Yeah. So Garrett hangs this great big poster of Fabian. Yes. (laughs) What is that about? I was so confused. That is the signal they used in the first week of the show 
to signal that they were going to meet at the wall and talk. So I did Lori, not remember that at all. Lori thought he That's was so going to throw it away. And he said, no, I'm going to enjoy it all day. And he put it up in Glory's room to signal to Sydney that he wanted to talk to her. So this is just him terrorizing her. So uh, the, the, the torment continues. I love it. Um, Sandy goes to Mila's. Um, Mila's working on her song idea. or her, She has a song idea book. She's writing her thoughts. Yeah, she's got a little book. She's writing all the lyrics she can think she's, of that are awful. Very, she writes them down. She's, she's excited. Very, yeah, she's very excited. She's happy. It's all hers. She feels like she has something that's her own. Hence, she mm -hmm. said her mother is controlling and all that. Um, Sandy says she will keep her secret of keeping that book a secret. I guess Mila is not But you do know that Sandy came there to tell her to get out of the band and stay away from Owen. Like, that was her entire intention of going there. But she and didn't. She, she backed off because she heard Mila's little speech about having nothing of her own. And since yeah. she feels exactly the same way, she backed off, but she's not happy about it. And then they go yeah, to the pool, the not. pool meeting together. Right. I don't know what it, the meet committee meeting, but it's a meeting at the pool. So I'm calling it like the pool meeting. So we have, um, the captain is back. Yay. Oh, I'm glad he's back. Actually. <laughs> I was excited. He's He's a very fun character. And they have yeah. not told us what happened when um, the Countess banged on his how submarine. And he, like he came out and like I don't remember what happened there. And now we're not we're not really talking about it yet. Yeah. That was so strange. Kelly, and Kelly, I guess she's having something because she's asked her dad if she's pretty. So I guess she's having some moments <laughs> i think it's always going to be that way when sophia is there because sophia is older so she looks grown up and she looks sophisticated and so callie's so probably comparing herself and wondering why jimmy was talking to sophia instead of her because she didn't talk to jimmy and doesn't know that sophia basically cut him out of the herd to like basically threaten him with her love so callie doesn't know any of that and even jimmy's like i think i screwed up my relationship with Callie by being forced into a conversation with Sophia. Right. So I think she's just being insecure. Um, Bobby calls, talks about Neil and then they, and then it said, and he needs her help, I guess, to find Neil because they're all still searching a yeah. day later. Yep. It says a day later, right? Is it the next day? It's the next day. Yes. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's 3 a.m. And it's everybody's still awake. <laughs> So the girls have a meeting. Um, they meet up for whatever the stage thing, I guess the Friday episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I have Sandy is mad that Mila wants to sing. And that's my only note on that. I didn't really get anything from the meeting. Besides um, Sydney was just sitting there traumatized. And that was really all I was focused on. Um, they want to have, of course, Owen and Sandy play at the event because they were going to do that anyway. And they talked about the stage being rotating and it was all a bunch of crap that was going on while Sydney was staring off into the middle distance and having her like crisis. Yeah. I just put Sydney is on edge. <laughs> yes. I have Countess bangs on submarine for captain, but and that's going to be something I think for next week, probably. I'm yes, guessing I think she's so. getting the captain involved with something and I'm scared. You're scared? <laughs> for Mila. Yes. You're scared. That's so cute. <laughs> she might set up like a parent meeting. Who knows what she's going to do to this poor child. Neil is found um, in the cabanas from the party the night before. And yes. that's yeah, that. They, that's the end of that. Yeah, they find Neil and um, and then we get a break and then it's the, the next episode and yep. Neil Episodes, drugs. episode 29. <laughs> This is where this is where they actually talk about how they think Neil was drugged. It goes very quickly yeah. and it's a lot of sciencey science talk because he actually says, "Who do you think could have altered the molecular structure of my drink?" <laughs> right. And I'm like, "Drugged is a lot easier to way to say." <laughs> <that."> <laughs> I'm like, Seriously. "What's happening, guys?" I know they like I to overcomplicate their language, but good lord. Yeah, right. <laughs> like if kids are watching the show, I don't even know what he's saying. Kids should <laughs> they definitely don't know what he's saying. I don't know. I don't think it's too complicated. I mean, it's overcomplicated for sure, but I think you could figure it out by the context clues. So, yeah, Neil's super tired. He's acting weird. 
and he seems to think he was sedated, which he said in science form. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? They already found Neil. I have Bobby and Callie talk about helping find Neil. I guess because she helped them. Yeah, Bobby thanks Callie for her insight because they did end up finding Neil. And really what she said was smart. She said, go back to the last place you saw him and search harder because you miss things. And, and that's and exactly went. what happened. Sandy goes to Sydney's. She fills her in on Neil. Sydney's being real fucking weird, which we know why. <laughs> and she's staring at the Fabian poster. <laughs> yeah, and she's like... Funny- I- as Sandy's chatting, 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 she's like, can't you see I'm busy? <laughs> <laughs> but the funny, I'm like, thing, the funny thing about that scene, though, is like they frame her in the window with the bars, and it looks like she's in prison as she stares out this window <laughs> again, like just traumatized. And I was like, that was a great piece of filming. And Sandy is just like, but I thought you'd want to know this information. <laughs> like, it's All right. boring. But you're right. She just blows her right off. I have Beric and Jimmy talk about nothing. Garrett still loves himself. <laughs> yeah, because what I wrote was that it was just the party recap, and they keep talking about Sophia as her car. Yeah. You know, like, they reference her as her powder blue whatever car, whatever. And um, Beric's kind of like, she's too old for you. And Jimmy's like, I know. I like Callie. <laughs> but, and then I just love Garrett because... He remakes the hole. He just punches a hole through this wall. Yeah. I love that. It just rolls. He's a mess. I yeah, and the rock him. wall. Yeah. Um, so Sydney says Sandy doesn't have much going on in her life. <laughs> that's like a knife to the heart right there, because that's what Sandy's been dealing with this entire time. And this girl right. that Sandy admires is just like, by the way, your life is pointless. Right, and Nancy, like everybody's mean to Sandy, it's a sin, and yeah, like even Mila, in, in her own way, is but doesn't mean to be, but you know, so Sandy, she is. Yeah, Mila's but, just sliding right in there and replacing her, and everybody's talking about how replaceable she is by telling her she has nothing. Sandy try, pretty much gets Sydney back, but doesn't even know because she's <laughs> like, Oh, that, that your grandmother? She doesn't look a thing like you. <laughs> Boom, that <Thank you. laughs> adds to Sydney's pain. So Get her, girl. <laughs> and then she kicks her out, basically, right? Yeah. She's like, get out. <laughs> um, and um, I, I just wrote down for Callie. I was like, Callie Moody, recap on Neil. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess she wasn't saying anything that was important. And then, of course, this is JT and Neil when they are, um, they're kind of like recapping again that the mom's mad at them, that they could lose their funding. Um, they talk about the drink taking tasting more acidic than it should have so that's almost confirming the fact that neil's been drugged yeah uh and then i think we go to sandy and glory which we have never we haven't seen them in a scene together in how long yeah it's been a while it's like they reestablished their friendship yeah she is she feels like everyone's mad at her <laughs> oh like well i don't think it's that it's just that i don't know they're they are well they're just mean to her they're not mad at her <laughs> they <laughs> use her when they need her and then they're like just mean yeah exactly. and i guess yeah i guess you can take that as mad being i would her. i would say that was mean i think that they dismiss her as a person and they use yeah, her they and they don't offer her anything in friendship they're setting her up to be a serial killer <laughs> they for are sure. they still are <laughs> for sure if she kills half of this town <laughs> I would be on her side. I would be like, get them, Sandy. They have all dismissed you. Like, this is the perfect setup for a Stephen King film. You realize that. It is. Or like prom night. Yeah. <laughs> they deserve so, it. <laughs> Callie, uh, did you, so I wasn't sure if I saw this right, but Callie saw Beric doing something, but um, I didn't know what it was. I don't know what one, it is. Uh, all I remember yeah. was Beric is shady and I think that might have been when, when he had the ice cream because like he he he's always up to something and he's always chasing her off and he has very weird conversations with most of the people in town I do not understand him and she talks to Jimmy and he says that she is jealous of Beric and Sophia <laughs> yeah he does I'm like all right 
<laughs> in my and notes, then, I was like, okay. these people are talking around the issue. They are not talking about the issue. Like the two of them should, could just say to each other, I like you. Do you like me? And then they could have a conversation about how so Sophia's crazy and Beric's weird. And then they could be team Callie, Jimmy, but they're not going to do that. It's Bobby, Bobby and Pam in season three of Dallas. <laughs> it so is. So why can't you talk to each other? <laughs> I have Garrett bumps into Sydney. He calls her Sandy again um, and says he knows just who to give the paper to. The end. That's all I got. So what you got? Any more, anything else on that one? Just that. I really enjoy the verbal sparring between um, Sydney and Garrett. I think that it's some of the more clever dialogue that they have going on. And in that conversation, she just basically looks at him at one point and goes, leave me alone. And he's like, no, because he's having so much fun terrorizing her. This is the first week I feel like Fridays wasn't like set up for anything major. No, it's not. There's nothing major that happens on Friday. I feel like Friday is just more of the same. Um, I was a tad disappointed. I was like, uh, yeah, and what's like, the big thing? One of the weird things that's happening through these episodes and, and happens in 30 the most is that for whatever reason, because of this drugging, which very scary for young children, I must say, for they sure. start to destroy their research. Yeah. And I'm like, why are they destroying their research? Because they're talking about how they're all going to have to recreate it. Recreate it. Now, I get them destroying the stuff on the computers because they feel like it's been tampered with. But they start in the beginning of 30 when we get there. They are literally shredding their work. And it's like, yeah. what is what is UB2B? What, what is happening? We're on and, UB2B. <laughs> yeah, and we're on UB2B. <laughs> Just why are they destroying their work? Why is that the answer to like, let's just have a dedicated computer that's not hooked up to the internet and maybe secure it with a couple more passwords. They're like, <laughs> burn it to the ground, destroy everything. <laughs> right. So we get to episode 30. We have um, the captain still in it. So he's reading Callie something. Did you, did you catch what it was? I was really tired during this episode. So you're going to have to take I know over. Exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you my notes. What is it? Um, I believe he read to her. I wrote it down. The it's from the Rhyme of the Ancient Marin Mariner by Coleridge. He okay. quotes a line from the second part. Now nah, you're gonna know why I'm an English major. Um, and <laughs> where he he says that um, it's as still as a painted ship on a painted ocean. So what he's basically telling her is there's there's nothing happening. There's no motion currently. So that's why it's as still as it is. But it's a very poetic way to say that. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, she's like, you know, you have mail. And he's like, yes. Yeah, so and she's like, are you going to answer any of it? And he's like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, this man is like dedicated to not answering it. We do find out that the countess, the countess's name is um, Valera. Uh, and I have a friend yeah. named Valera. So that was cool. <laughs> I have Garrett's a free man. And Jimmy blew it with Callie. Yeah. yeah. I also have this uh, the envelope. JT thinks an envelope's about to blow up. He jumps out the window. Uh, yeah, when they, Sadie grabs it. And Neil they, like kind of hides by the computer. Like I guess he's trying to protect himself. They just they're destroying their stuff, and this thing comes. This they find this package, and both of them do, they don't recognize it. So of course right. they think the package is sus, which they should, because Neil's been bugged and they don't know what's going on so they think it's a bomb and katie thinks it's her book of the month which is mu <laughs> yeah. muffin muffin meets something like <laughs> i was cracking up because oh muffin meets moonbeam and she she just <laughs> she grabs it and they don't even try to save his sister they both book it because they think it's gonna explode and right. she's just like hey this isn't my muffin meets moonbeam of the month. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, this kid is my favorite kid ever. I love her so much. She's yeah, so crazy. It was, a, it was a fun scene. Yeah. And then the mayor and Sydney are um, still having conversations that lead Sydney to believe that she's Sandy. Yeah. Because Sydney says, you got to learn to appreciate the things in life while you still have them. <laughs> yes and which is then, funny because she's probably like just thinking yeah i'm not your daughter this whole then time i'm confused as to what happens because callie is looking through the periscope and that she's mm -hmm. talking to her father 
And you then cut to Jimmy on the bike. Now, it makes it feel like maybe Callie was watching Jimmy ride on this bike. But how would that be possible from a periscope? Like, how, like, what's happening? So, like, I didn't yeah, really I understand that. And I wrote in my notes that, that Katie is my hero because of everything she was doing. Right. Um, also, JT, oh, wait, I, it, JT's phone is a clear plastic one, which is very 90s. I do have that. Um, this is where we find out that they're bugs. Yes, it is. So they try. Mrs. Atwater that, wait, calls. My, one more note real quick. I have foreign spies are upset, red and green. And that's all I got. And then I said, well, take over. <laughs> so you. Mrs. Atwater calls. And she's just basically like, he said he'd be home 10 minutes ago. So he's like more in trouble. He's been missing for almost 24 hours from his house. So he's screwed. And right. he hangs up and he's using the clear plastic phone where you can see the insides. And I was like, oh, it's yeah. so, so 90s. Like, remember, they had I, Game Boys like that. I think, I think I had one for like a year, but they were shitty. So it like yeah, broke of course they quick. were. Yeah. And so he takes out a different phone that looks like a homemade thing. And he says, never let it be said that I'm a liar. And he calls the beeper. And that's when they realize the beeper isn't working. And when they realize the beeper isn't working, they take it apart to find out why it's not working. And they try to call it from different devices. Like it's crazy. And then <laughs> they find the bug in it and the they turn on really loud queen music. And yeah. in the green room, you see that they're both listening to this broadcast from the bug, which by the way, how, whose bug is it? Is it the red <laughs> bug or the green bug? Why are they both listening to the same thing? I don't know. <laughs> well, the, the Russians do not like Queen, but the green guy <laughs> loves Queen and says, wow, what great taste in music they have. And um, I don't understand that at all. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Ben, that's when um, Beric and Callie have the incident with the ice cream where she goes to work, basically. And right. he kind of tries to discourage her from going to work again. He's doing shady shit in the shop. And I yeah. think I think he's picking up messages when he goes out and gets ice cream and stuff because every time he has the ice cream, he's like, "Why don't you go do something childlike and go away?" And he's the same the ice here. cream man's involved, just like we think the ice cream man, you know, sell drugs. Everyone is involved. And Sorry then, if anyone's an ice cream man. <laughs> we don't mean that. We remember Charmed, <laughs> you don't and sell drugs. Uh, you might be a villain. Um, <laughs> so. Then we see we see um, the mayor and Sydney tearing wallpaper samples <laughs> off the wall, and that was a cute scene. It was I really like cute, mother bonding, like and they were like uh, basically like f them boots, and they're tearing pieces off the wall and talking shit on the boots. And, and doesn't like her away. her mom says something about she used to want to be a singer, right? Not like Sandy is, and she's <laughs> she's singing and humming and stabbing. And here goes. Eyes. Sydney again. <laughs> she just keeps staring and it's so mm, funny. I can't. And Jimmy goes to the sub and knocks to try and get in. Yeah. And the captain is not having it. He's like, I'm going to shoot you if I come up there and I see anybody here, Valera. I'm, I swear to God, no means no. Yes means yes. Get out of here. And <laughs> Jimmy runs away. And then Garrett knocks a hole in the wall so he can see Sydney. Yeah, yeah, I do have that. And then the boys go through this elaborate thing to destroy the bug. Like they put the bug on a chair and they start talking really <laughs> loud near it. And then they smash it with a baseball bat. And JT mm -hmm. says, see, I told you baseball was important. And then throws the baseball bat away. Yeah, I put JT and Neil bang the bug. Guys go crazy. <laughs> That's okay. Right. So the important part of this episode is what happens at the end is like, remember when I said to you before that I felt like there was a real reason that Neil gave that book of bad poetry to Glory? Right. And I even suggested that the poetry might have been written by Neil. I think I'm right. So Neil mm -hmm. says, JT says, I hope you remember all of the information because your memory cells are better than my memory cells, which is like, could you just not be a human being for one second here, guys? And mm -hmm. he goes, yeah, well, um, he says something weird about notes. And then they cut to Glory in her bedroom with the poetry book again. So I think all of the information they have is included right. in the notebook. 
Yeah, that was like the end where Glory was just like out, like peeking out the window or whatever. And there was, was somebody the watching there. her. Yeah, and it looks like it may yeah. be one of the red light guys. Or okay. Barrick. Or Barrick. But we can't really <laughs> tell. So Glory is now being stalked because of Neil. And mm. we we don't know what's going on. But as for Friday episode, this is really anticlimactic from what we're we're used to. Yeah. We're used to big things on Fridays. What happened there? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of felt like it would have been better if Neil had been missing for a few days and then turned up on Friday. That would have been a way to make it happen. Unless, I mean, this is, this might be just like big stuff leading to a Monday episode because Monday episodes are like the cleanup of big things. So maybe, I don't know. I agree. I do like how this, like, I don't know. I almost feel like the storyline with Sydney not knowing um, if she's Sandy I think they want it to be a big thing. So they want it to be longer than a week's episode. But at the same yeah. time, there's not much there. Like they're just, it's just her sad about it and everyone twisting the knife, which by the way, comedically is hilarious. But storyline-wise, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not much. It's not much happening. Yeah. I'm wondering where it's going to go with that. Also, whoever writes Katie is the greatest writer of all time. <laughs> every greatest line, child writer. Every line out of her mouth is gold. Everything she does is gold. I just love her. She wants piggyback rides. She reads books about muffins. I don't know. Like, she's not afraid of anything, and she thinks everyone around her is dumb. And I'm like, this kid is so perfect. So maybe she'll end up saving the day from whatever's going on with these people. <laughs> maybe. Um, I also am very interested in where the captain, what the captain's relationship to the people in town is. Yeah, and there's got to be something to count as going to him. It's got to come out. Yeah, I need to know what that was about. And also, I need to know why the mayor was so ecstatic in that scene when they started destroying things. Because I know she was happy that she was ahead in the polls, but she seemed really giddy in that scene. And like, even Sydney was like, you never hum, you never sing. And I'm like, is there more to it? Like, what's going on? Or is it just because... They want to stick the knife in. Yeah, is it, it's Grant, right? Booth, yeah. Other guy. yeah, we didn't see him at all this week. Um, but yeah, the mayor's all, all involved. She was yeah. in a lot this week. Yeah, she was very involved this week. The countess was on. We still aren't seeing the Atwater parents. I don't mm. understand why I wonder we haven't. If we will. Yeah, right? we should, like, because Neil should be grounded for life. He disappeared <laughs> overnight. Right? Like, no one in this town is worried when their children don't come home. Like Bobby, he slept overnight at JT's. At no point did they say he called mom and dad to let them know where he was. I want to see Nancy's parents and maybe Bobby and Sophia's, but you know, they don't talk to him. So they're probably out of town. I would like to know Nancy's last name. And if she has one, <laughs> she does not. She does not. <laughs> she has no last name. She has no familial relationships of any kind. And from what they say about mm -hmm. um, Sandy, Sandy has a ton of brothers and sisters. Now some of them should be the same age as her. So why aren't we seeing any more of the swans? Mm, I know. Like, it seems very weird how isolated these children are. So we're at the halfway point in the series, pretty much. We have 35 episodes to go. And how do you <laughs> feel about this show, con considering the rocky start of it? Uh, this fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, I I don't know like how I feel. You know, I feel like it's a roller coaster because sometimes I find that I'm really, really enjoying what's happening. Like this week, the terrorizing of Sydney, even though I think they, they pushed it a little too hard. But also remember, I'm watching it all in a big block. Um, right. It was very funny. And I liked Garrett being really smug. And I am invested in whatever is going on with UB2B. And I, <laughs> I even find Callie less annoying than I did in the beginning. I thought yeah, she was she's gotten better. She was aggressively bad in the beginning. Her acting has yeah. improved by leaps and bounds. Her character has improved. Mm -hmm. um, Jimmy's better. Like he used to them. just all be surly. Like he was all of them are swinging into their characters a bit better now. And all. Yeah. And I, I don't know. It's weird, though, because the writing is still hit or miss. Like, it's still one week is amazing. One week is bad. And then you get a mixed bag. You don't know what you're going to get. Right. So I can I can see why it probably only got sixty five episodes, but I do I do like a lot of the acting in it. I think a lot like Neil is adorable, right? And Sandy is so sad. <laughs> all right, well I'll wrap this episode up. Um, thanks for joining Queers and Soaps for today. Follow us on all the socials. Comment, like, subscribe, do all the things, and 
We'll see you again next time. <laughs> Bye-bye.